get going. I've got my lovely helpers today with me again, Sarah Bean and John Cleary. John's doing my slides and Sarah is the lady on the chat and she's the boss, she's in charge. So just a couple of things. If you've got yourself muted, fabulous, because it just means it doesn't disturb anyone else. And then you can hear my dulcet tones. And if you want to mute your video you absolutely can please don't feel like you've got to be on camera but if you want to stay on camera you can do that too so please just be comfortable because today we're going to talk about storytelling how exciting is this okay i, I you know i always say this i, I struggle because um, i want to tell you so much about this this is a day workshop for me i can i can do a whole day on this because it's really quite fascinating. A um, couple of people still coming in. Please make yourself comfortable. Lovely to see you. Welcome to my webinar. And oh, says so sorry, we are having cams. My camera's not working. Oh, but I'm here. As long as you can hear and see the slides, that's fabulous. Wonderful. Yeah, so I could do a whole day on this because there's so much to tell you, but I've tried to pick the bits as always that you will get real value from. So it's lovely to meet you all. All right, so we're going to start off with um, a question for you all. And that is this, and I want you to just put your answers in the chat. If you've been to one of my webinars before, we do a little bit of this interaction. Answers in the chat. How do you use storytelling when you are selling right now? And I'm going to give you a little minute to think about this and put your answers into the chat because I'm interested how you currently use storytelling when you're selling. And the nice thing is I get to have a real read of these after the webinar. So I really appreciate your input because I get to know you more as well, which helps me with my content as well. So thank you for that. That's just so useful. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Some of you know me already. I appreciate that. You've been on my webinars, but there's a few new people in today. So instead of saying my sales road trip, as I usually do, I've called it my sales story today because I thought that would be much more apt as we're talking about storytelling. And it's just to show you really the journey I've been on in sales because it's been a really wonderful wonderful one in terms of the breadth of experience I've had. I've been really lucky that I haven't had to sort of stay in one particular industry. I'm, and often uh, by accident, I went into new areas and industries, uh, which is incredibly lucky for me. So I started at NatWest when I was 16. I have been on this wonderful journey selling lots of different lovely things. Recaro car seats, any of you guys or, or girls who love your motor cars, you'll know Recaro car seats. Stainless steel they are, that little bundle there on the, uh, on the screen. I sold stainless steel for eight years. Um, and it's a long time, but I clearly loved what I did. It was very technical and I enjoyed everything I learned about selling stainless steel. I worked at a venue, I sold hospitality, good old yellow pages. Some of you will remember yellow pages. Mary Jane, I think you probably had that uh, yellow pages in, in the USA or something similar. Um, but they stopped making them in, in print form in 2018, which was a, a sad day. But I sold yellow pages for three years. I've sold SaaS products, recruitment, exhibition stands, digital marketing. And of course, I am now a sales coach and consultant, which I absolutely adore. And it's using everything on that sales story today uh, that I've learned and all my stories that I have gathered over those years. So this story is to be continued, of course, which is the exciting bit. Now, in amongst that, you will know, probably if you've followed me, um, no problem if you're late, by the way. Thank you, Jane. Lovely to see you here. You haven't missed much. No. Um, Truly Madly Baby was my baby, which was born from having my own baby, Sam. When he was three months old, I decided to start a business and then in a moment of madness, took it into the dragon's den. I got investment from Peter Jones, which is fantastic. But of course, the story is not for today, even though we are doing storytelling. If you want to know that story, what happened in the end, then I luckily had a TEDx opportunity and in 2018 I spoke at 
TEDx in Brighton. So they, the talk is there's no such word as can't. So look, let's start with the statistic. Here's the irony. Isn't this an amazing stat? Probably one that I do actually remember because 63% of people remember stories and only 5% remember statistics so I want to kind of just leave that thought with you there because isn't that just one of the most wonderful stats that you will ever see it's actually really important to note this um, and I'm going to talk even more in this presentation about why this happens uh, so I'm hoping you're going to really enjoy some of the um, content that I'm actually going to give you today because it's not just going to be about the types of stories and where we can tell them um, I've got some really interesting information about how you work in terms of your brain when you're told stories. So let's have a look. Right from the beginning of time, we have told stories. Oh my goodness me. Um, yeah, we looked a little bit different back then, but it was over 100,000 years worth of storytelling has gone on for us. Um, and this is actually a really poignant fact. This is why they're trusted so much, because we have told them for so long and they have always done these three things. If you look, they've allowed us to exchange values. OK, so if you think about um, the values we all possess, we love to share those with each other. We often are aligned with each other's values and conversations with with stories suddenly allow us to see the other people's values so to an exchange of values has been critical from very very early on the next thing they do is they help us make sense of the world and boy do we need to try and make sense of the world sometimes but it's a really really true thing if we don't understand what's happening in certain places then the stories we hear and that the ones we're told are the reason that we then make sense of the world around us. I don't know if any of you saw the uh, rocket launch this week, or I think it was over the weekend and my son Sam, he's 15, so we were watching that together. And that was really making sense of a whole lot of stuff, just following the journey of that. That was really, really fascinating. Sam told me all about it. He teaches me more than I teach him now, I think. And obviously it affects change when we can actually tell each other stories. Um, it influences us, it lets us see the other side of things. So stories are massively important to us as a nation, as a humans, as a globe. Yeah, they're incredibly important. So I have got two stories. So you've got a choice of A or B, all right? I'm gonna read you two stories. Here's how it's gonna go. So in the comments, after I've told both stories, you've got to tell me which story you prefer, all right? What's the most memorable story for you? So here's A. Two legs sit on three legs, eating one leg. Then along comes four legs and steals one leg from two legs. Two legs then chase four legs with three legs and gets his one leg back. That's story A. Here's story B. A young boy sits on a stool, eating a chicken bone. Then along comes a dog that steals the chicken bone from the boy. The boy then chases the dog with the stool and gets his chicken bone back. Which story was the most memorable to you, A or B? Pop your answers in the comments. I can see the chat comments going up, 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 up. So what, Sarah, what's the, what's the result? Um, the, the result is mainly B, but what is quite interesting is, um, I think as Alison said, A was fun to work out the riddle. And there's a few <laughs> people agreeing, actually, so I guess there's a... A little bit of a disagreement. Well, it's not even a disagreement because obviously we all then will have a choice as to what we do pick. But I think what's really interesting about this, this is actually from a German storyteller coach called Andrea Heckelman, and she did this study. And the resounding um, overall effect was that most people liked B because they could relate to a boy, a dog, a stall, etc. 
but it is very interesting what Alison said. And I think it depends on how your brain works because we all know we're, we're incredibly unique, which is one of the things I always talk about, which is amazing. And some of us are a little bit more analytical and some of us are much more in that problem solving genre. And so that would really appeal to us because it would be that competitive challenge of, oh, I've got to work out then what this truly is. But in terms of memory, if you think about now recalling this story for somebody else and telling it back, because that's one of the most magical things about storytelling is actually most stories we repeat because we heard them somewhere else, then you will find it much harder to repeat back the two leg, three leg, one leg story um, in terms of the story with the boy, the stool, the dog and the chicken bone. And, and I guess that's really the point. And when you're talking to your customers, you've got to be really aware of how they think and how they connect. So it's just a little fun example, really, just to start thinking about actually how do stories truly connect us? So now we're going to get onto the very exciting bit because this, this bit I love. And this bit I have learned myself, you know, over time, because I am truly curious about wanting to know, well, why, why does everybody say use stories? What's important about stories? Why are they exciting? So here's, here's the thing. It is very much a chemical thing that happens in our brains. Who knew? Uh, and I want to talk to you about uh, the hormones that actually affect how we connect over stories. So let's look at the chemical effect of stories because this is gonna be so important for you to take away and start understanding then how you then connect stories to your business and to your customers. So the first thing we need to look at is, let's wait for the next slide. The human mind is predominantly a story processor, not a logic processor. So even if we have that logical analytical mind, what we really need to understand that the very first instinct in our brain is our limbic brain, which is the oldest part of our brain. And that's the one attached to feelings and emotions and not logics and language. So it's a very interesting dynamic that happens in the way that we process information. So stories are really up our street in terms of that that first instinct of how we translate what we hear. So what happens next in our fabulous brains? I, I really should have done psychology. I, I still might one day, but it fascinates me. So I'm going to tell you about the three heavenly hormones that are connected to storytelling, because these are really important for you to know. So the first one is something called dopamine. Now you will have probably heard of these hormones because I have, but I didn't necessarily really understand what they meant and what they were. But what happens when you release dopamine in a conversation or in a story is that the person you're talking to suddenly becomes very focused, they're very motivated, and they are definitely feeling like this is a memorable experience. That's what happens when dopamine is released. And of course, it has to be a certain type of story that's told in order for dopamine to be released. So let's have a little look at what sort of story might do that. The dopamine story is very much that suspense, the story that you know has got an ending and you're not yet being told what that ending is. You know, the to be continued story. This is the story that's really exciting and also helps us to release dopamine in our minds, which of course the effects are we feel positive, we get connected and we want to know what happens next. So this is when you're trying to keep somebody on the edge of their seat. And it's often those stories where you're recalling a situation where perhaps it was a bit of a do or die or you were in a race and then something happened. Did you finish the race? Did you win? What happened to that business? The customer, well, the customer was doing this. This is what was happening. Well, what happened in the end? Those are the dopamine stories and they're really great. So you will all have dopamine stories. And when you go away from this, one of the things that I'll talk about is you thinking about which hormone you're connecting with, 
with the stories that you have. Chip Heath was an American academic. You can find these through Google, the, all of these quotes, but I try and find things that are actually really interesting. So to make our communications more effective, we need to shift our thinking from not what information do I need to convey, so not what I have to tell them all about, but what questions do I want my audience to then ask me? So the dopamine story is one of the best for this. You want people to be wanting to know more and ask you more questions about that story that you've just told them. So dopamine, amazing hormone. Oxytocin, you will probably know that this is the hormone of love. Um, but it's a really important hormone for us as humans. It is a human hormone. It's the most human and it makes us feel relaxed. It makes us feel generous. It certainly makes us feel like you are a trusted person and we bond. All right. So oxytocin is most definitely a fantastic hormone to release. But think about how you then tell your stories to release the, the love hormone. It's going to be emotional stories. It's got to be because that's then how you're going to trigger this wonderful hormone. And I mean, for me, anyone who knows me will know I talk a lot about my dad. I do tell stories about my mum too. It's just that my dad was much louder um, than my mum. But anything around my dad, that will be releasing oxytocin for you. Anything around, even my TEDx talk particularly, that will have some dopamine in there because you'll be wondering maybe what happened next, but you'll definitely have oxytocin because there's a little bit of adversity and a little bit of coming back from adversity too. And that's a very human, loving um, thing that you will feel because you will connect on that level, especially if you resonate because you've perhaps been in a similar situation. Oxytocin, very powerful. Robert Cialdini, Italian-American, professor of psychology and marketing. This, this guy is very interesting. He says the idea of potential loss plays a large role in our human decision-making. And in fact, people seem to be more motivated by the thought of losing something than by the thought of gaining something of equal value. This is really interesting. We are much more motivated if we think that we're going to actually not get something or lose something or miss out on something than if we are, are actually then striving to make something better. It's a harder motivation for us to feel as humans. And in marketing, you may be aware of the stories where they say there's only three seats left uh, you need to buy today to get this price. This is all those scarcity tactics that are used, even though most of us see right through them. We still get that feeling that we don't actually want to lose out, that fear of missing out, FOMO. And that is really important to understand. And that is very much connected with oxytocin as well, because it's quite an emotional hormone that can get released. And then the last one's endorphins. And of course, you again probably will have heard of these because this is all about um, when you make someone laugh, basically you release endorphins. So it's the creative connection with somebody. Again, we'll feel relaxed because we're having fun and it feels really nice. It boosts pleasure and it builds trust. So endorphins are hugely important. But before we go to the next slide, you have to be really careful about releasing endorphins in business and storytelling because not everybody has the same sense of humor as you. And it's a really interesting thing in terms of uh, humor because we don't all think the same things are funny, but there's quite a skill attached to making humor a really clever thing. So I have got a video clip, okay? So we have not done this before. So we are taking a huge risk. I'm stepping outside my comfort zone. I'm gonna play you a little bit of video. The thing about this clip for me is that most people that I talk to have seen this clip. They remember this clip. If they talk about Michael McIntyre, then very often they'll say, oh, do you remember the one about the herbs and spices? 
And the reason why this is so funny and we connect to it so well in the main is because we can relate to it. I have had herbs and spices in my cupboard that I have moved from one house to another. You know, I am that person. And that's why you see everybody in the audience laughing so much with this clip. And I thought it was a really great example to show you of how endorphins can be released when you tell a story just like this. And I know he's clever and I know that's why he's so very successful. But using that content that resonates with other people is how we beautifully connect as humans. So the thing is, it, it, endorphins are great, amazing. If you can use humor, then it's one of the best things that you'll ever use. But please try and use it in the right way. Don't tell jokes. If you try and tell too many jokes, you, you're really risking the fact they don't have the same sense of humor as you. But if you tell real, relatable stories with humor, then your experiences that people can resonate with um, are the best forms of humor that you can use. And this is very much about knowing your customer as well, which we're also going to mention. But look, beware, because if we've got heavenly hormones, we have most certainly got the hormones from hell. All right. And this is really important. And these two hormones I'm going to tell you about create intolerance and irritability, irritability and disengagement. It makes them feel uncreative, critical, forgetful, and people can make bad decisions because of these two hormones from hell and they are cortisol and adrenaline. Now the point being is that these hormones can flare up at any point but you are quite responsible for making sure that they don't exist if you tell fabulous stories. If you connect with these three heavenly hormones then these two are never going to rear their ugly head. But if you try and if you don't actually uh, use your stories, what you'll find is that they you're getting over. If you go back, John, sorry, just to that previous slide, the one before, you're trying then to get rid of all of these irritabilities and intolerances before you've even then got to connect with them. So imagine how much harder your job is if you're just selling or if you're just presenting statistics and nothing else that's why stories are so important when you look at the chemical things that go on when we tell stories thanks John need to click on so I want to talk about the essence of storytelling so I was really trying to think I like my acronyms as you know so what I did is I created an acronym around the word stories because that kind of made sense and I just want to talk a little bit about the different ways and the different thoughts that you should be thinking about when you're looking at the stories that you tell. Okay so first of all let's deal with uh, the elephant in the room going back to that stat right at the beginning statistical stories okay. Next slide John. So statistical stories are actually really important for some people, okay? So the whole point is, it's not about never giving anyone any stats. It's not about never ever mentioning anything to do with numbers or facts because many of us actually want that in order to connect. But it's about creating great stories with those statistics. So when you get the two together, then you're into this beautifully ideal situation. Um, and that's really, really worth thinking about. So there's some stories around uh, why Boston Lakes, which I've told on my previous webinars where I've talked about uh, targets we needed to hit and how much money we needed to make and how much we were off our target. Well, that's statistical stuff. But within it, I was telling the story of how we actually got to that point. So that made it much more palatable with a little dab of statistics for the person who needs it. So a balance is really good to have if you've got some interesting stats to get in there. Build them around a story. Second, transformational stories. 
These are really huge. Um, and if you think about the way that you use things like case studies, somebody mentioned, I think, in the comments that that's how they use storytelling in their business. Case studies are brilliant in terms of showing a transformation. And so these stories are particularly good to use. But again, use them really wisely so that you tell the story because transformation's great, but if you only tell me what happened in the end, I've missed the beginning and I need the beginning to feel all of those lovely heavenly hormones in that transformation story. So transformational stories are massively beneficial, but remember to tell them fully, you know, open yourself up to storytelling. That's one of the big things I would say. Observational stories. Um, how many of you are people watchers? Um, I can sit all day and watch people. I absolutely adore people watching. And so often, you know, I'll be observing how people behave. I may observe how uh, my work's going with a client and that helps me to then pull a story back as to perhaps what worked or what didn't work or what problems they found. Observational stories are really impactful. And of course, Remember what we said just a moment ago about um, Michael McIntyre and how he uses his humour. And another guy I think was Peter Kay. Peter Kay was a big one who always, it still is in terms of what he actually, how he tells his stories about the dad dancing, etc. They're all these observational stories which are really, really useful for us to hear and connect with. It's all about connection relevant okay here's really important piece here because i could tell you a hundred stories but if you're not really interested in that particular subject you're going to find it very hard to connect with me and this is where we need to really truly understand our customer um, and a lot of the work i do in my live it love it sell it workshops and coaching is all about looking at what does our ideal client truly need from us on an emotional level so not just the, the avatar side, but emotionally, what do they need from us? So relevance is massively important when you're telling your stories. And impactful, again, if something has got a real impact to it, um, if it's got that kind of real wow factor, it's really memorable, it stays with you. If you think about the stories in your lives, the most impactful stories, they actually never really go away. And sometimes that's because they were amazing experiences. And sometimes it's because they were really bad experiences. But impact's very, very important because again, it's prompting that dop dopamine um, hormone, which creates that memorable piece around the story. You might not use every single one of these types of stories when you're selling. But being aware of how many types of stories there are that you can use is really quite something because you might not have realized that you could create a story around that subject in the way that it will then trigger this connection with the human brain. And then, of course, there's the empathetic stories. And this is back to the oxytocin. This is back to the really connecting on that emotional level with your customers and understanding how they're feeling. And right now, if you watched my webinar about selling in a pandemic, right now is a massive time for us to be selling in an empathetic way. We have to meet our customers where they are now. Um, I actually believe that's how we should have always been selling. But of course, it's wonderful that we are now realizing that that's really the best way for us to create these relationships in business. So empathetic is a must. Um, and I would really recommend that you make sure that you have those real empathy stories to be able to connect right now and sensational. And of course, you know, this is, uh, I think of the media when I see this word because they, they can be very sensational about how they report things. Um, and you can too, if it's perhaps a really great news story, if it's a bit of PR for instance, then making it sensational just makes it feel just a little bit more exciting than perhaps in that dull way that it could sound 
So again, it's just making it feel and sound a little bit different. It's not telling any porky pies. It's completely true, but it's just about the tone and the diction and the words that you use that make it just trigger these fabulous hormones. So sensational is my last S. You will connect in the best way ever when you step into your buyer's stories, okay? So there's this really amazing uh, TEDx talk, um, and I've got her name written down, and I'll probably say it wrong, but um, it's Chimamande Ngozi Adichie. And I, again, I will put the links into the replay so you can watch this TEDx talk. And she talks about the danger of the single story. And I thought this was a very interesting thing to add into the webinar. This is all about assumption from my perspective and something I talk about a lot for anyone who listens to any of my content. We must never ever assume because we just don't know. We can think we know, we could probably make a good guess. But when we assume that we know what our customers' stories are, then we're not connecting in that wonderful way that we can. And this TED talk about the danger of the single story talks all about how we have a perception of a type of person. And that's the story that surrounds that type of person. And it's a lot deeper than that and you must watch it. It's very, very interesting. But the fact is that if we don't step into the buyer's stories and really understand, you know, what's their story? What's their background? Why did they start their businesses? then we will limit the connection that we make with those customers. So it's a two-way thing is storytelling. It's as much as you wanting to listen to their stories as you want to then tell your stories too that connect back with them. It's a wonderful process, but you have to be very aware of making sure you cover every step of that process. And then, of course, there's the limiting stories that we tell ourselves. So the stories in our minds. So how many times have I been told by many of my clients, I don't have a story? Oh, well, I, I just don't have anything interesting to say. I don't know how to really create stories around anything I've ever done. My life has been dull. And the most wonderful thing happens when I do work with them because suddenly all of these fabulous stories come to light quite by accident and they realize how many fabulous stories they really do have that actually connect beautifully back to their business. So never be that person who kind of sits and thinks, I don't have a story, I don't really know how to tell stories. I hope you'll be able to go away from this webinar knowing about how chemically we react, how many types of stories that you can actually tell, and also a bit more about you and the stories that you have, because you will have amazing stories for sure that you can definitely connect. Just an example, I met a lady who had been on Dragon's Den just a few weeks back, and she had one investment of £250,000 back in 2005, around the time I was on the programme. And you know what? I met her by chance on LinkedIn. Uh, we had a virtual cuppa and I said to her, I said, you were on Dragon's Den. She said, I know you were too. She said, I looked at all your stuff. She said, and you talk about it. I said, I know. I wasn't going to talk about it. I didn't think it was a story. I didn't think anyone would be interested. And she said, it's amazing, isn't it? I've never talked about being on there ever. And from that, she wrote a whole blog about her experience on Dragon's Den. And she got a massive um, response from her audience about writing that blog. We often assume people don't want to hear our stories. But if the stories influence them and the stories have that impact and they trigger those fabulous hormones, then the story's for them as much as it is for us. And I think that's a really important thing to take away from this webinar. Your stories aren't for you, they're actually for your customer. So how do you use your stories? Well, when I look at things like my live it, love it, sell it uh, methodology that I created, um, I was trying to sort of pinpoint in that, oh, well, where do I use my storytelling in, in live it um, and, and in love it and in sell it? And actually, what we do is we use our storytelling 
all the way through. The live it part of my methodology is all about you. So this is about your mindset, how you feel about selling. This is the part where you really need to understand your story. Next slide, John. You know, what is your why? You must have heard this many times and I will say it again and again and again because when we really truly understand why we do what we do, we start really understanding our story because often it's related back to something that happened to us in the past or the journey that we've been on, maybe in our careers or something that we learned that we knew we had this mission to pass on then to other people. So the why is very, very deep rooted. It's a purpose and a belief, and it's most definitely a story. So if you have ever done a work on what's your why, have a think about what's the story behind your why, because that's really massively important in the whole starting point of your business and your personal brand and the value you bring. And then you must know your audience. So this is all the love it part where we look at our ideal client and what's their why and their stories that we just talked about and connecting all of those up. If we don't know our audience, and I really mean this is work you have to do, then you will never be able to connect on quite that level. So this is so, so important. Um, John actually mentioned to me when we were looking at the slides that these seats are clearly not socially distancing seats. So um, I do want to just mention that because that's part of our new norm right now, isn't it? So, But know your audience. This is really important. And then from there, it's all about because you know your why and you understand your ideal client and their why, this is about the first impressions that you're now going to make. So who are you? And if you understand that why and the story, then that's the story that then goes right through everything that you then do through your website, through your LinkedIn profile, through your social media profiles. This is your personal brand. And if people know you and they know your story, it's such an amazing place to start with you. If all they see straight away is what you do and what you sell, there's no hormonal connection taking place. So remember how all of these things actually connect in to this being so important. If you look at my LinkedIn profile and the about, the about page, there's this lovely bit where you can write all about you. I'm sure it's about 3,000 odd characters. It's quite a long piece on your profile page. There's many, many people who will have, this is where what I do, this is where I've worked, here's the awards I've won, here's the qualifications I've got, here's the customers I've worked with, here's the things that I've done with those customers. But actually, where's your story? How do I know who you are? And it's exactly the same when I visit a website, that very first page on a website. And boy, is it hard now to keep people on your websites because it's so noisy out there, isn't it? What's that first page I go to? What does it tell me? Does it sell, sell, sell? Does it say we, we, we? Or does it say, here's what's in it for you and here's what you're going to get and here's who I am to help you? Just think about the stories that you're telling and how you present them. First impressions, they will go a huge way to you being able to maintain that longer connection. And you can position yourself in so many different ways with your stories. You can be the thought leader. So you can be that visionary, the person who sort of sees forward in the future, the person who sees how the world might look. We love those people. We like reading about their thoughts and their stories. And stories don't have to have just happened. Stories could be the ones you think may happen in the future. How exciting are they? So the thought leader. And people find these people very fascinating. There's a, there's a little bit of dopamine kicks in with the thought leader. Or you can be the expert. And that's a great thing to do. Some people get a little bit funny about this word. I can't really call myself an expert. But believe you me, if you've spent 30 years doing something in your career... I would say you're a fairly big expert in what you're doing, all right? So don't always think that it's about the qualifications you have because of course they have great value, but sometimes the qualifications of life experience 
are just as good to make you the expert. And you will have stories connected to that journey that create the expertise that people are just hungering for and want to hear about. You can also be the connector. I bet most of you will know a connector in your network. You know, the person who always introduces you to the other people and always connects people together and sees that Joe over there actually should connect with Dave because they'd be a great fit. Now, the reason why the connector is so clever is because he listens to stories and he gets to know who these people are. And then he realizes that these people could actually work really well together or maybe a match or could help each other. And he will connect through stories because he will say, you know, Joe, well, he's great because he did such and such and he got that to happen. And so he's a brilliant connection for you. Just have a cup of tea. I'm sure you'll get on great. Storytelling through connection. The inspiration. Um, we will always have those inspirational people that we follow. And usually if, you're, if I say to you, you know, who's the, most, um, the person who inspires you the most, it will probably be somebody who's actually quite well known. You know, a lot of people will say Tony Robbins, Gary Vee, Simon Sinek. You know, it could be a huge amount of different people. The fact is they've done something to inspire you and I would put most of the money I have, and there's not a lot of that to be fair, on the fact that it's because they've told you an amazing story at some point. And that's the beauty of storytelling. They've probably triggered all that oxytocin um, and they've got you to really fall in love with what they stand for, what their values are and who they are. The inspiration. You can also be the guide. The guide's a little bit quieter but he tells those wise stories. You know, I kind of, I know I always talk about my dad, but you know, my dad told amazing stories. So he was very much the guide storyteller. He was the one who told you the stories, but there was always that lovely reason behind that story that made you think about, actually there's a bit of wisdom in that. It's not just a story for the sake of it. I've actually learned something. I'll remember that and I'll watch out for that. And so the guide is a really lovely way to tell your stories and bring lots of wisdom to everybody as well. And of course, the authority. Um, and, you know, uh, again, this is a slightly different style, but some people really do want to have somebody directing them and uh, they want to feel like somebody has the authority. There's a lot of trust involved in allowing somebody to have authority with you. But I think if you do like them and you trust them um, and they have demonstrated to you that perhaps they have the expertise and the wisdom, I think that you would be quite comfortable allowing them to be an authority in their storytelling. And a lot of people can influence very easily when they have the authoritative storytelling and of course the trusted one. Well, of course we all want to be this but trusted um, is very much about the stories uh, of me being you once. Those for me are the massive trusted stories. I have stepped in your shoes. I have walked where you currently walk now. Those stories are really, really powerful. They're very empathetic, oxytocin all the way, but they are very much about building trust. When you've walked the walk, you very often looked at as the trusted one. You'll all have these stories as well. So the, the source of our stories, you know, this is quite interesting thinking about, so where do all these stories come from? We now know what happens with stories chemically. We understand how we can tell our stories, what sort of storyteller we can be. But where do these stories come from? So let's just have a little look at a few places where we can take our stories and use them really effectively. Stories in the news. Okay, I'm not saying we have to get political. The news is very political at the moment, but there are certain stories in the news that can be used really effectively. Um, predominantly good news stories are great, but also uh, stories where you are showing understanding and connection, they're very important. So there are stories in the news. It could even be your local news because you've had something put in your local news that you share as the story. 
personal experience. So this picture makes me go, whoa, I'm, I'm massively fear, fearful of heights. So I'm a bit like, I don't know why I picked this picture. But personal experience is, is just huge. I talk very much about UHP, your unique human proposition. So no more USPs, now it's about your UHP. Um, and your personal experiences are what make you you. And Bupa, as I've mentioned before, said there are 7.1 billion types of normal on the planet, which is wonderful. And every one of those billion, 7.1 billion people have all got personal experiences. And when my experience is the same as your experience, we connect on a whole new level. So those are really important stories. Testimonials, fabulous, good news stories. Testimonials are very much about the good news. So somebody who is saying, this person's fabulous, here's what I learned from them, you must use them, I recommend them. Okay, so the testimonial, massively powerful. Don't stop collecting them. Get as many as you can on LinkedIn. Keep topping them up and making them current because LinkedIn likes that. And ask for testimonials if you've done a good job. Massively great stories to use in your business. And then there's the case study, which is slightly different in that we talked before about it starting at the beginning and following the whole journey through. These are really powerful because we get the whole picture. We get where they started, how they felt, what was happening, and actually what we did to fix, to give them that wonderful outcome. It's a really great, powerful story. There's also things like industry stories. So if you're in a specific industry, you'll find that there's actually some great industry stories. So I'd be reading blogs. I'd be making sure that you're, you're regularly going on to your local associations in your industry. You're perhaps tapping into conferences, which a lot of them now are online, so you haven't got to miss out on them. And get your educational stories from your industry if they're important to connect with your customer. Stories you learn from others. I'd say this is one of the biggest ones, actually. I was on a podcast last week with Daryl Prayal, and he was the guy. If any of you saw the sales transatlantic throwdown that we had, which was the USA women versus the UK women, we had this fabulous Zoom debate all about sales, and I was on the UK team. Daryl kind of hosted and facilitated and tried to keep us all under control. And I did a podcast with him last week and I was talking about scripts because I was really, um, it's slightly, slightly off topic, but it's not. Because for me, scripts, if they're word for word, they just don't feel like it's you talking to me. And I, and I just have this dislike of them. And I want to help people to realize they don't need scripts. And then Dale said to me, look, he said, you've got a script. He said, because everyone who's ever told you a story you're just recalling that story and repeating it. So, so that's a script like this. And I did think to myself, yeah, I guess he's got a point, but I still tell that story in my way. So even though I heard it from somewhere else, I then make it my story. And I tell it in my language, with my expressions, in my tone of voice. So stories that you learn from others, you can still make them your stories. And yes, of course, if you need to credit someone with it, then do that. That's only polite. But you can still recall and tell a story in your own way, which can be just as powerful. And let's face it, most of us will not invent the wheel. So most of the stories we tell are stories that we have learned from others. So remember that because it's massively important. And then, of course, analogies and the picture although obviously I am a massive chocoholic and I could definitely eat some of those right now. This is all about life is like a box of chocolates. So the analogies are just something we can all relate to. You never know which one you're gonna get. So any of you who's old enough to remember Forrest Gump will remember that amazing analogy. And I talk about the sales road trip being a journey. So that's a similar thing. So you'll have things in your business that you can create analogy stories around. And they're really fun because it just makes them feel a little bit more memorable. So again, that dopamine being kicked off in your hormones. 
So what do great storytellers have? Let's have a look. They really have these key ingredients. They create a vision, a picture, or a scene, okay? Remembering we're not all visual. Some of us are auditory, kinesthetic, but the fact is we just create this image vision. And so we are in the, in the story with those people. And I know that you will probably know who your great storytellers are. And it might be your children. It could have been your dad or your grandpa. It could have been someone really famous. But the great storytellers will always have you captured into this place and almost held hostage there, but completely at your will because you want to stay there. It's like an escape. What else do they do? They understand their customers. Oh my goodness, I can't say this enough, and I know I've said it several times, when you really understand your customers and their stories, there's no better way that you can connect and tell them the right stories. You know, and that's the thing. It's about telling them the right stories that you know are gonna have that impact. And of course, they have great listening skills because there's another element to storytelling and that is listening. When we really truly listen to stories and what they really mean, and we really dig deep and then we transfer them into our own stories because of what we understood. That's when we really get great stories come out the other side of it. And so we have to have great listening skills to be able to remember and recall the right bits of those stories. And finally, they are uniquely them, our UHP. Your stories are your stories and you tell them as you. No one else will tell your stories. Well, they might, but it certainly won't be the way that you told the story. And this is the bit, you know, this is the important thing. So, four things, four things that you can do after this webinar. Here are your takeaways, okay? The first thing is this. I desperately now want all of you to believe that you can tell stories and that you have many because you do. That's the first thing. The second thing, write down your stories, okay? It doesn't matter how you do it. You can type them, you can journal them. It doesn't matter how you do it, but write down your stories. Every time you've been out somewhere, every time you learn a new story, every time something happened, write down that story, document it, save it because that's your story. Then you can match them to this heavenly hormones that they create, okay? So start thinking, oh, that story that happened, was that a dopamine story? Was that an oxytocin story? Or was that really funny? And, and write down into the columns, maybe put them into separate columns, the type of story that you have then got in front of you. And then, Tell those stories. This is the important bit that most people forget to do. It's massively important. So look, here's the final thoughts of my webinar all about storytelling, which I could talk so much more about, to be honest, but let's just give you some final thoughts on the things that we've discussed. Why do stories sell? Well, they create a chemical connection. And hopefully you now know all about that connection and what those heavenly hormones are. Because of how we tell them, that's why they sell, because of how we actually deliver those stories and the journey that we create with those stories. Massively important. Take your customers on a journey. The sources of our stories. Imagine all those fabulous sources that we've now got to take our stories from. So there's not just one type of story, which is amazing. And how memorable they are. So the more memorable we make our stories, the more we connect with somebody on that lovely human level. And they also show that we understand. And this is massive. Again, this is releasing all the right hormones for us to trust people and to bond with people and feel like we really do like this person because they get us and they've actually understood our world. Massively important. They build trust. Um, 
every, absolutely every time a story can build trust, especially if it's one that resonates with you, that you've been on a similar journey or had a similar experience. That's huge. And of course, it allows us to establish our UHP, which we've all got. That's the most exciting bit for me. So inside of, of each of us is a natural born storyteller, just waiting to be born. Isn't that lovely? So before you all go, there's something else that I want to do. I want to ask one person in the audience, and it can be any of you, I want to ask who wants to tell us a really short story, okay? It can be about anything, just short. And I want to know who's gonna step up to the mark. Sarah's on the chat, she can see you all. You need to put a reaction on your reaction button, just put a thumbs up if you're up for telling us a two minute story. Who's up for it? We've got any takers, Sarah. Not yet, Jules. <laughs> so remember we talked about the stories we tell ourselves and getting in our own way and how we don't really want to put ourselves out there because we're not really sure we've got any stories. We've got oh. a couple of Jules. Oh. Yeah, uh, Alison, I think, was first. Right, fabulous. Come on, Alison. Have you unmuted, Alison? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm one of those who does not think they have any stories whatsoever. <laughs> so how you can get to the, this ripe age and not have any. So I'm going to have to dig deep. But just very quickly, in fact, my T-shirt tells the story. Um, about three years ago, I was looking for um, a special birthday present for myself. All right, to th I, the family need hints on birthday presents, and they. I really wanted one of these chairs because I used to live in Bermuda and it's where I met my husband and my two children were born. And they are so comfy because there is space to put your wine, they are broad and the legs are comfy and it's just the perfect sitting in the garden chair. Anyway, we looked all over the internet, couldn't find them anywhere and it's only when I put this t-shirt on I realised that that was exactly the chair that I was looking for and I'd been wearing it all the time and hadn't spotted it. So then my family got one and now my husband, I have to kick him out of my chair all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a lovely story, Alison. I love it. Wonderful mm -hmm. story. Right, so here's the next question then, guys, because um, John's got the next slide, hopefully. I want you to now put in the comments, which of the heavenly hormones did Alison trigger with that lovely short story? What do we think? Because for me, this is about wanting to really get you to connect to what your stories actually do to us as humans and how we connect. Because I think that's a really lovely piece of information to know. Oh, we've got a bit of all three in there, look, Sarah. <laughs> bit of all three. So there's loads of answers coming in there. Sarah, what, what have you got coming in? Because I, I can see lots of stuff there. Sorry, it was on mute. Uh, lots of oxytocin and definitely some endorphins coming through as well. Fabulous. I kind of feel like there was a bit of dopamine for me as well, because I was thinking, actually, I'm probably going to remember this story because it's really lovely and it was a very simple story. I think that's another thing for me is to keep these stories quite simple. You know, um, I mean, I have to tell you, my son, he's a fantastic storyteller, but my goodness me, sometimes he goes into so much detail and I'm a bit like, oh gosh, I don't want him to lose me. He can take me off on a tangent sometimes. But thank you, Alison. That was so amazing that Welcome. you stepped no. up to the mark. Awesome, awesome. So look, you've all got stories, okay? And the thing to do is those four things that we've just talked about 
away from this. And the next slide, I think, is my question I always like to ask. What one thing will you do differently after this webinar? Because that's so important to me that I see what it was or what things that you will take away from the storytelling webinar that are going to help you. Just put some stuff in the comments for us because it's really nice to know what people are going to do. And while you're just doing that, I just want to quickly just tell you a little bit about the ways that you can connect with me. We'll just flip through these next few slides. Obviously the book, I think Ella was on with us uh, today. I hope she's still on with us. Ella got her book arrived today. I know Alison's uh, read the book as well. She's fabulous, Alison's followed me for some time. Thank you, Alison. Um, then we've got other things like my podcast, which is called The Human Conversation. I have some great conversations on there. Some great storytelling happens on that podcast, I can tell you. Amazing, amazing. And also uh, things like my UHP experience. I mean, this is much more for sales teams, but I really want to work with teams as much as individuals because this is all relevant. All of this content that I produce is relevant for entrepreneurs as well as the teams. I've got the pick and mix program. I call it for the legends only. This is very much an online entrepreneur program. So if you're running your own business, this is perfect. Definitely worth having a look at that one. And then of course, there's always my one-to-one -one coaching, which is, um, I love, I totally love. It's a different experience every time for me. Different story every time with one-to-one -one coaching for sure. And so um, I would ask you to definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a lot more coming on there. My, my son, Sam, is working with me through the summer, which I'm super excited about. He's my chief creative officer for the summer at Live It, Love It, Sell It. He's 15. He missed out on his work experience this year. So he's working with me through the summer and he's, he writes music. He's super creative and he's going to be looking after my YouTube channel, which means mum's got to make lots of videos, which means they're going to be quite fun, I think. Um, so please subscribe so you can see some of those. And there's lots of stuff as well as all the webinar replays are on there too. And please connect. Let's have a virtual cuppa if you think that we can chat more about any help I can offer on the sales side. I promise this, this wouldn't be salesy because it isn't. This is about if you liked this, if you like my stories, if you connect, then let's connect and make that even more of a connection. And then finally, my next webinar is the 15th of June. This is the last in the series and this is how to start a business. So I thought it would be interesting just to tell you a little bit more about the things to think about when you start a business. And even if you're in a business that's perhaps a little bit stuck, you might find some really interesting bits in that webinar. Please join me there. Always uh, complimentary. All I ask is your time. Finally, are there any questions for um, you to ask me? Please, please put them in the chat if there's anything you want me to answer here and now. I'm very, very happy to. And if not, thank you so much for joining me again. It's been wonderful. Any questions, Sarah, coming up, just in case? Do a little check. Not at the moment. Just lots of thank yous. <laughs> You've been very thought-provoking as usual. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody's put, what is TEDx, I think, did they? Yeah, Sue. So. Uh, TEDx is, um, as in, what is the TEDx or where's my TEDx? Just to clarify. Just unmute yourself, Sue, if you want to. Yeah, if you want to say something, Sue. Is she there? She's still mute. Sue, you're still muted. Let me see if I can unmute you. That's it. Oh, hello, just, Sue. <laughs> you keep talking about this TEDx. I have no idea what it is. Oh, Sue, it's um, it's a um, uh, an event where you, where you have lots of speakers, basically. And I had um, a, a talk that I did at Brighton in 2018. So I, because I know you, 
I will send you the link for it and you can have a watch of it and then you'll be able to see mm -hmm. exactly what it's all about. So, yeah. Thank you, Sue, for asking. All right. I'm probably the only one that didn't know. Well, it's, it's fine. You know, we don't all know everything, to be honest. That's how we learn, isn't it? So I'm pleased you asked. That's awesome. Lovely to see you again. Can I ask a question? Yes, Jill? Ella. Hello. Hi. I was, I was flashing the book up. <laughs> everyone can see <laughs> um yeah working with with new clients or prospective clients jules as you know i work in social media marketing and um obviously this storytelling is something that is extremely close to my heart and extremely important in terms of businesses trying to build the no like and trust yeah. on social media through social media marketing as they should be through all their marketing shouldn't they yes yeah the consistency is kind of key isn't it yeah 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 but i was just going to ask you obviously there's um i do come across across quite a lot of prospective clients who are quite skeptical about why does storytelling matter why does it really matter yeah so have you, I was wondering about preparing, because I, as, 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 as you know, my business is relatively new and I'm still thinking about ways in which I can make those first steps in working with a client yeah. really clear yeah. and, build, you know, and build that solid foundation of a relationship so that we can, I can work really together well with my clients. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how do I, can you can suggest some ways that I could sort of maybe broach this to them and get the importance across of it to them right in the early stages when we are strategizing we're, we're, we're laying down social media marketing strategy yes yeah, so you're really trying to get across to them the importance of storytelling because they're just not really sure how it works you know there's uh, yeah and also yeah. the fact that obviously i think a lot of the time a lot of the content they're putting out on social media is all sell 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 and not tell 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 yeah exactly and and i think you know just today really when you think about the triggers that we have chemically with stories you know the way we connect just looking at alison's story there just that couple of minutes that she told us that story and how we felt you know, and this is the thing that people need to understand about stories. It's a massive way of us connecting. It's almost subconscious. We don't always realize that that's why we feel how we feel about somebody. But it's absolutely sure to be because of the stories they've told, their story, the impact that's had. And so story actually also not only connects us as humans, but it identifies who they are. So if you're looking at something like personal brand, which is a big yeah. buzz thing, but it's important, you know, yeah. there's no other Ella on the planet, then that's massively important to your customers that they establish that. And the best way to establish it is through stories, because if they're just quoting facts or this is what I sell, people are just going to get those two horrible hormones from hell, aren't they? And then yeah. you've got all those obstacles to get over and you sound like everyone else who's out there. So two things, I think the way that stories help us connect because of the whole human chemical reaction, um, but the identifying themselves as a personal brand, it's huge. Yeah. And the only way to really do that is to use their personal stories. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, you know, sort of um, warts and all. Ella, it just has to be something that we go, oh, yeah, I get, I get where yeah. you come from. I get why you started your business now. I understand your beliefs and your values and your, your purpose. You know, that's kind of really important. Sarah, you just typed a question, Diane, and I missed that. Do you want to just, um, is, was it? Was just it? Yours. I just wonder if also you've got a story step, can't even speak. <laughs> Storytelling challenge on Facebook. I didn't know if you wanted to mention that. To this yes. Point. I thank you so much because um, next Monday I'm going to do a five day storytelling um, challenge because I kind of thought it backed this up really nicely. Um, so if you want to join that, Ella, then yes. that might be fun. And anyone else who's on, you know, it will be in my Facebook group because it's yeah. the easiest way to run it. Um, yeah. And I think it's just really nice for you to start putting this into action. You know, it's almost that trying it. 
because then it, well, you yes. get it more, don't you? I mean, as, as you know, Jules, I mean, you know, we're connected on LinkedIn and you know that I like to tell a good story. You do. You're very good at it. <laughs> but, the pro- but the problem is it's trying to convince these clients. Like, for example, I'm about to start working with a guy who's a scrap metal merchant. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, well, what, what, how, how can, what, you know, what, as, you know, I've got to trying- tell you. I've got to tell you, I've just finished coaching a guy who is a builder and I'm not even telling porkies. That's just such a great connection for me to tell you about because that was the same thing, really. It's like, oh, yeah. but the stories he's got are wonderful. I mean, really wonderful. So this guy would, oh, is it a guy or a lady? It's a guy, yeah. Oh amazing stories he would have just everyday yeah. stories will be fascinating for him to be able to connect into his business yeah um, honestly, yeah i believe he's got a good i believe oh, he's got a good story about metal oh god definitely i sold stainless steel for eight years i've got loads of good stories about stainless steel <laughs> but oh, honestly everyone's got a story thank you thank it's you pleasure Jules, can i ask a question yes yes can I just check your list of sources? Because I got down news, personal experience, testimonials, industry stories, and analogies. Have I missed any? Case study? Case study. I knew there was one that I'd not recorded. Thank you. No, that's okay. And there's going to be a recording as well. So I'll make sure that you get that so you can uh, watch it back wherever you want to um, and whenever as well. Thank you so much. Okay, so any more questions in there, Sarah? No, not at the moment, Jules. Okay. If there's any that come, then I will definitely get back to you and answer them. Thank you so much. I have loved this webinar. I mean, I love them all, but I love storytelling. It's one of my favourite things. And I hope you realise just from this little time we've spent together how massively important stories are for your business. So please do have a cuppa if you want to talk more about storytelling um, and have a fantastic week. Thanks for joining me.